Now, what's awesome about church is that we get to be inspired by examples of people who do this. And so when I read this text, I thought, okay, I think it, I think it makes a ton of sense for Nick and Jessica to come up and join us. So we're going to transition, and you guys are going to thank them as they come, so we, you can clap for them, and as you're clapping, we're going to make it up to the stage, okay? Would you welcome Nick and Jessica Noring with me? Great. Just a little setup. I've known Nick and Jessica for about two, three years now. Um, and uh, I'm just excited. So could you guys just share a little bit about your family and a little background about you two? Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having us. And so, yeah, Nick and Jessica, and we have two kids, Graham and Grace. Graham just turned six. Grace is three. Uh, yeah, we've been at Branch for about three years now and found it through the men's Bible study that met in a little cabin um, over on Lake Minnewashta yeah. a few years back. So... Yeah. Awesome. How many of you have drank coffee when you've been here at Branch? Just raise your hand. It's good stuff, isn't it? Now, what you might not know, if you haven't looked closely enough, is that we serve what's called Bold Three Coffee, and that's what Nick and Jessica do. And so what I would love for you guys to do is just share a little bit about the vision. How did it start? What are the things that you're doing with this coffee as a ministry? And give us a little bit of background around that. Yeah, great. So... Bold Three Coffee, yeah, we started about nine years ago now. Uh, it was not too long after our faith journey. We, had, we accepted Christ together at a church service um, about 12 years ago now. And we started, it was really intimidating to get into the Bible, to get into the church community. And so we kind of found something very special, and that was meeting with Jesus every morning over coffee and the Word of God. And something really special happened when we did that. And very slowly, God started telling us, I want you to combine these things. I want you to combine coffee and the Word of God and community. And then he started breaking our heart for children and showed, opened our eyes and just showed us that there's so many children around the world that don't have access to the Word of God. And so at the time, I was in the corporate world doing really well, and I shared my faith story on Easter a couple years ago, now if, if you remember, um, but it was one of those moments when Jesus said, throw your net on the other side of the boat, because I was very comfortable at the current job, was making good money, you know, everything was going well, and he said, I want you to leave and walk away from everything that you have been working so hard your life for and throw the net over here, and it wasn't very clear, he just said, leave and I want you to do something with coffee and basically start a coffee ministry for Jesus. And I'm like, okay, Lord. <laughs> so I left, and Jessica left. She was at her job too. And that's when Bold Three Coffee started. Um, how it works is we partner with another ministry called One Hope. One Hope is down in Florida. They've been around for 20, 30 years. And uh, you might know them for making the Bible app for kids. If you have your cell phone, if you have the Bible app for kids, uh, One Hope is responsible for that. They partnered with Version to do that. And we work with them on, it's called the Book of Hope. And the Book of Hope is a children's scripture book, and it's translated into 150 different languages. And they hand it out through missionaries and church partners all around the world. And so every bag of coffee that we sell through Bold Three Coffee, it's available on our website. Uh, there's churches that we're working with around the country, like Branch Church. Um, every bag that we sell, three children are reached with God's word uh, through One Hope, the missionary organization that we work with. So that's the um, short and sweet of Bold Three Coffee right now. That's awesome. So in the first year, we're doing this men's Bible study at this little cabin on the lake, and we're studying the Gospel of John. And just like this, we got to John chapter 21. And we started talking about how Jesus told the, the disciples to throw the net on the other side. And that moment for you guys, I know, changed a lot. You're living in Plymouth. You're commuting. We're just barely getting to know each other. Like you found Branch through pickleball. Praise the Lord. Um, some of you are like, yes, praise the Lord. And I'm talking about them coming, not for pickleball. Okay. Um, but God uses that moment to shift a ton. So can you just share about how he worked in that moment when you collided with this text? Yes, so um, we were sitting in the Bible study on the cabin on Lake Minnewashta, and Jessica and I, 
were living up in Plymouth, as Brian mentioned, we were comfortable. We had remodeled a little Rambler that we bought, and um, we just felt like a stirring from the Lord that it was time to move. And we had been looking at houses a little bit for probably around one to two years, and we couldn't find anything. And it was in that time when, like, you know, you would put an offer on a house, and there would be 30 other offers, and you couldn't find one. And we were pretty frustrated because we felt like God might have been telling us to move. Um, and it was in that Bible study that we were studying this verse on that day, and I asked the guys to pray for us. I was like, guys, we're kind of frustrated. We feel like God might be calling us to move. Can you just pray for us about this housing situation? And it was on that day, like right after the Bible study, Jessica called me and she goes, hey, I found this house that just came on the market out in Victoria. I want you to go look at it. We ended up looking at it and putting an offer on it, like on that day, I think. And long story short, that's where we're living now, and God called us to move out here and become and join Branch. So it was a big change from what we were used to. Um, we were really comfortable in the church community that we were a part of in Plymouth, but it was it was kind of unexpected. He's like, I want you to just pick everything up and move across the metro and come over here and be a part of Branch. So it's one of those. Yeah. Yeah, we're so grateful. It's just a great testimony of God's faithfulness in so many ways. And, you know, sometimes when we remember how he's been faithful in the past, that can catapult us into what's ahead. And God's stirring you again. So I would love for you just to share about how you sense Jesus saying, get ready to throw your net on the other side. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Yeah. And then, so um, part of Bold Three Coffee, one of the visions that the Lord has always given is a, it's called a coffee house community center. And over the last couple of years, we've, Really, our hearts have been breaking for um, human trafficking, specifically with children. And so um, he keeps combining all these things, and we're like, okay, Lord, what do you want us to do next for that? Um, we see this a larger space where people can come and enjoy a cup of coffee and enjoy maybe a Bible study, and there's space for children where it's always centered on kids where they can come and have fun. There's maybe a, a gym and an athletic facility. So it's a larger space, more like a community center centered around kids. And then all of the proceeds, he keeps saying, like, trafficking, promote, get, get the word out about it. It's a huge problem in the world right now, and we need to educate people about it. And so, okay, so what do we do next, Lord? And all of a sudden, these, next, these last like, few months, we kind of had this plan of like, okay, here's our next season. Um, we're going to be comfortable. We're you know, involved in branch and the groups. And okay, it's going to be a great season. All of a sudden, he keeps bringing this vision to our mind of like a van. We keep seeing this van. We're like, what? <laughs> what does a van have to do with a coffee house? And um, long story short, we're listening and listening and praying, and, keep, and this keeps coming up in our morning Bible time and coffee, and he says, I want you to buy a van. I say, okay, God. So we ended up getting a van, and then he slowly makes it more clear. I want you to travel a camper van, a camper van. Um, I want you to travel around the country, and I want you to tell people this vision. I want you to pray for people. I want you to meet with ministries that are doing the work of rescuing kids from trafficking, and then I want you to partner with them. And I want you to tell people about it. And then through Bold Three Coffee, you're going to support these organizations. And that's going to eventually lead to coming back here someday and starting this coffee house community center. So he's like, throw your net over here and buy a van. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, that's very unique. Uh, Jessica, how does this just all sit with you as you listen to the Lord? Such a good question. And bear with me with my voice. I asked production if they could take out the frogginess in my voice today. Um, but yeah, so for me, I think um, as I was thinking through this, it was just what kept coming to me was Proverbs 16, 9. We can make our plans, but it's the Lord who establishes our steps. And I think for me, I am such a planner. And I'm a person that asks Nick that wants to know all the details. And I know I've shared my faith story before, but you know, I have the plan. I got it all figured out. Um, but God continues to work on my heart of he is the one who has the ultimate plan. Obviously, I know that um, I think God wants us to plan. He's very orderly, but at the same time, like Brian said, having those open hands has been something that I've continued to have to just release my hands, literally physically do it, because um, I personally am like, that scares me. I don't know why, you know, so I want to know all the details. So I, I go back to that verse um, time and time again that we can make our plans, but it's the Lord who determines our steps. Yeah. 
It's just really encouraging to me to be up here with you and think about the journey that we've had in a really short amount of time. And when I think about you guys, you have demonstrated such ability to listen to the Lord and just humbly say, not my will, but yours be done, and respond. Um, I, don't, I think this is the first time I've heard someone say Jesus told us to buy a van. Um, <laughs> But it's you guys, and it's so clear that like, he's leading you in this way. So for us, as we wrestle with this text and as we listen to the voice of Jesus, what encouragement would you have for people who might be in a place of life right now where they made sense, like Jesus might be calling me to throw my net in another spot, and that feels a little iffy to me? Yeah, I would say just go. I know that's scary, um, but I just was thinking through this too. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if it feels uncertain, even if there's like this just bubbling fear within to go in the midst of it, I think um, I am not being totally truthful if I say we, you know, I don't have that rising up within me when we do throw the net over. It's like there's all sorts of doubts that will come up. Um, I think the enemy will have a lot of opposition towards it at times. So just really, we don't have to know all the details to trust Jesus. I think that I get really emotional because... Um, there's just been so many times where I don't understand his plan, but he is so faithful and he will um, continue to show you, but also be reliant. So as you take that step, it's not like, okay, God, I got it all figured out. I can do it. I think the reason why he doesn't give us all the details, at least for me, is because he knows that I'd be like, all right, God, I got it all figured out. I'll just go ahead and run ahead of you. So it's being reliant on him, even after you take that step. Um, to continue to put him first and continue to seek him, to listen, uh, something that we've been really doing a lot this last year, uh, more than ever, is just like, Jesus, what do you want me to know about this fear I have? I have this just bubbling fear and anxiety. Uh, what do you want me to know about it? And just listen, and like Brian said, just being with him has been something that is a challenge in our busy world, but just sitting with him um, and letting him speak and continue to do that in our lives. Yeah, I, I mean, Jessica said something about the opposition, too. And I think one of the things that came up was when he does call us to take that bold step, stay, be extra intentional about our routines, about being in the Word of God and in prayer, and then writing it down. Because a lot of times what has happened for us was he'll tell us something, and if I don't have it written down in the journal... Um, and like the Bible verse of where God spoke to me on that, it's really easy to forget it. So like for this van thing, we've had to look back a number of times now, like 10 times and look back in my journal and be like, are you really saying this? Because at first we're like, no, we're not going to do that. That's stupid. Why would we do that? But I, he said it like 10 times and here it is in writing and here's the Bible verses and like yeah. it's kind of a document. So uh, just, yeah, that yeah. came up. Yeah. He's so good. So faithful. Well, I'm going to invite our team to come up so that we can respond and worship. But I just want to say on behalf of us, thank you for listening to the Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for being a demonstration of just really bold faith to step forward and being an offering to encourage us today. So would you stand with us? We're going to pray. We're going to pray over the Norings, uh, but also just prepare our hearts to receive what Jesus has for us today. Would you just pray with us? Father, thank you so much for this moment that we've been able to share in your word, that we've been able to hear from you, God. Um, there are times in life, Father, where you invite us to do something that is beyond us and do something different, many times, in fact. And so I pray over us in this room that sense that, that, God, you would give us a really strong sense of your goodness, your sovereignty, um, your direction over our lives, our comings and our goings, and how you see everything, Lord ask that you bless the Norings as they continue to follow after you, Jesus. I'm so grateful that they're here and a part of this church. Would you bless Bold 3 and enable it through the power of your Holy Spirit to become everything that you want it to become, Father, for your kingdom's purpose and for your glory alone. Uh, let it be so. And Father, I pray for all the seeds that have been sown here in the room that we would bring them to you in a way and you'd continue to speak to us of what it looks like to follow after you one step at a time. We worship you and we sing to you now in Jesus' name. Amen.